Good day and welcome to today's service. Today I want to talk about the two boulders. Now we just read this story in the Bible in Matthew 7, 24 to 27. But I want to start with a story from my own life. When I was young, around about 10 years old, my father decided to build a house for us. So my father um, is an engineer, so he designed our new church building and our house. And my family really loved to go to church when I was young. So my father built our new house right next to our new church building. And, um, but this house was really big. It had three levels. In South Africa, we have a huge land. So I think, I, I, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like 100 meters by 100 meters, our yard. It was huge, and our house was huge. It had three stories. It had seven bedrooms. It had like, I don't know um, how many rooms in total, but it was huge. And it, the roof was uh, made of thatch, you know, like the grass that you, this long grass that you see in the field. In South Africa, we have a thatch roof. I saw in Korea, we also have in the old days, those, those little huts with the thatch roof. But our house had that thatch roof and the garden was full of um, um, apple trees and, you know, mango and banana and all these things. And we had strawberries and everything. But this house was built on a strong foundation. I remember as I went with my dad in the mornings and they were digging up the foundation. That first day I saw the boulder putting those white lines and drawing the the plants on the piece of land and how deep they um, dug that foundation and how they put in the concrete, you know, and put in some steel. And I remember those early winter mornings was, was wonderful to go there and there's nothing, you know, there's, um, it is open, it is in the field. So how do you cook in the field? How do you have a barbecue party? Well, well, what I saw with my own eyes, that boulders that dig the foundation, they used the shuffle that they just digged with. They just rinsed it, you know, and they made a fire. And in the shuffle, they were frying eggs and sausages and meat. And it sounds terrible, but it, I didn't die. So it was uh, <laughs> nothing bad. So, but then we had this strong storm. You know, what I saw while they were building our house, they put these lines. I don't know if you've ever built a house, but they put like a line and they need to follow this line to make the wall straight. And then it looks so strong. It looked like nothing can go wrong. But at times the builder was angry or I, I would say the, the manager of the, of the builders was angry because it wasn't straight enough. And he told them they should break it down and build it again. So I saw that happen. And we're going to talk about all of this now in our, our spiritual life. But the second thing that, that, that I also saw, I remember one day on the, we were busy building the, the third level. And there came a very, very strong wind that night. And my, our neighbors had an airplane. Now that wind picked up his airplane and pushed it against his house. That wind took the little um, shed where our, in South Africa, we, we have nannies. So I know in Korea, we do everything south. We have cleaning robots and stuff like that. In South Africa, we have ladies that stay with us and clean the house and do the washing and, and the whole thing. But anyways, her whole house was picked up by that wind and thrown into the field next door. And, <laughs> And that same wind blow over some of our walls in that house because it wasn't dry yet. They were still building. So these are just all stories about building. But today we're going to talk about you. We're going to talk about us, actually, not only you, but me also. Our spiritual life because we are also builders. And this is what Jesus told us. Now we just read it. Yeah, we are builders. 
Let's read that Matthew 7, 24 to 27 again. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, this is what Jesus said, and, and, and so, you, so you must hear what Jesus is saying to you today, and you must do it. And you must do it. And um, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and when the winds blow, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and do them not, do them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, who built his house up on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blow, and beat up on that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So just imagine my dad just started to building this three-story house with seven bedrooms on the sand. It wouldn't stand. But my dad was wise. He was a wise man. They dig deep. They put in the concrete. They put in the steel. They did the hard work. And to this house, that, to this day, that beautiful house is still there in South Africa. Jude says, Beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith. So... Yeah, we, we, can, we can read it. He said, Dear friends, keep building on the foundation of your most holy faith. So your faith is your foundation. This is where your house is going to be built up. So we are building a spiritual house. So I'm not asking you. I'm not suggesting. I'm telling you. You are building a spiritual house. As you go through life, you are building a spiritual life, a spiritual house. How? Well, first we're going to um, say how to make sure that your house is strong. We're going to look at that today. The second point we're going to look at is how to ensure that when the trials of life come, come pouring down, the rains, the flood, the everything, that your spiritual house will be able to stand the, in storms. So we're going to ask two questions. How to build it and what? How and what? How do we ensure that our spiritual house stands? And number two, what do we need to do to make sure that it will survive? All right, are you ready? Let's start. So today we're going to take a close look at this parable of Jesus, the two, the two builders. The one was wise and the one was foolish. And what they did and what they didn't do and what caused that their house to stand or fall. So the first person we're going to look at is the bolder, the wise one. What makes him wise? Well, he hears, whosoever hears the sayings. Jesus said, if you hear my saying. So a lot of us hear our, um, what Jesus is saying. He does, and does them. So don't only hear, you also need to do. It's very important. There are two parts to this. He digs deep. In Luke 6, 47, 48, we read about this. He realized that a rock is needed. You need to realize that a rock is needed to build your spiritual house upon. And that rock is Christ Jesus. It's very simple. It's your faith, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ. As I saw... When they built those, those walls in our house, they always used a line. I think nowadays they use like laser or I don't know what. But it was a simple fishing rod. You know, when you go fishing, they had these fishing lines that they would just put straight. And, that, and you need to have a line. You need to make sure that you're building in a straight line. You don't build a house without a sure foundation. Believe me, this, this big building... They drill deep into the earth with those big drills and put concrete in to make sure it will stand. You don't build a, a thing like this without making sure that your, that your foundation is strong. And I know we live for now. We live for the cars and the glamour and the apartments and the houses. But I tell you every day that I, that I speak to you that it's not about now. It's about after here. After, after this life. Will your house stand? Will my house stand? I hope so. Stories that illustrate this point. You know, when I, um, my, 
my, my hearing what my mom said was completely based on her tone. You know, the way my mom speaks, if, if she said, clean your room, you know, it's like, okay, I might clean it. Clean your room, you know, there's a tone, there's a tone. My doing of what my mother said was completely based on her mood. So if she said, clean your room, I knew this, you know, it's fine. If she said, clean your room, you know, and I could read the mood, I, I knew it is time to clean, it is time to clean my house. And this is God's tone in this um, story. It's not clean your room, it is clean your room. It is very, very direct. It's make sure that your house is strong. This is not just love your neighbor. No, it's make sure that house is perfect. So let's look at scriptures dealing with the wise. The Bible talks about wise people a lot. So we're going to read a few scriptures. Psalm 2, verse 10 to 12. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wealth is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. It is wise to trust in the Lord. And I know you are trusting in the Lord. You are wise. Proverbs 8, 32, 36. 36. Now therefore hearken unto me, O children, for blessed are they that keep my ways, hear my instruction, and be wise and refuse it not. Don't refuse God's instructions. Blessed is the man that heareth me, and watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors, for whoso find me, this is Jesus, find life. And who shall obtain favor of the Lord? But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his soul. All they that hate me loveth death. So if you love Jesus, you have life. If you hate Jesus, well, you love death. This is what the Bible says. Proverbs 10 verse 8. The wise in heart will receive commandments, but a parting fool shall fail. If you are wise, you will listen when God speaks to you. Proverbs 12, verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkened unto counsel is wise. If you want to be a fool, follow your own way. If you want to listen to the Bible, you are wise. What kind of house are you building? This is my question to you, my friends. What kind of house are you building? In case you missed this passage, Let's just look about what we just read. It said, serve the Lord with fear. Kiss the Son. It means worship the Son. Trust in Him. Hearken unto me. Keep my ways. Hear my instructions. Keep on watching. Keep on waiting. Find me. Find me and find life. Obtain favor. Receive my commandments and listen to my counsel. In only ten verses from the, in only ten verses um, that we just read, all these things come. Trust in me. Listen to me. Keep my ways. Do you get the message that God's mood is not like clean your room? It's clean your room. Make sure your house is on the strong f- foundation. You can have a PhD and a master's and a doctor's, and and it will. It, it will not make your house strong if you don't believe, if you don't follow God. You can have all this knowledge in your head. You can listen to it day by day. But if you don't do it, the Bible says your house is not strong. A wise builder does, and his house stands. A wise builder doesn't only listen. He do it, and his house will keep on standing. Do you want to go to heaven Think about that. Do you want to go to heaven? And I believe your answer is yes. Yesterday I was watching this uh, documentary on Apple TV about these bikers that traveled around the world on their motorcycles. And it went tough and tough and tougher and the wheels came off, the frames break, the bugs bite them, they fall down, their um, support vehicles had accidents, 
And as they were drawing through this, I think it was um, some desert or something, they saw a shrine and they went in there to pray for the gods to help them on their trip around the world. And I just thought, my goodness, you don't know the Lord. <laughs> you know? If I'm on a trip around the world, I would definitely pray to God. You know, God, help me, help me. They went into that little shrine and, and you know, said their prayers to some weird God or something. I was so happy that I know the Lord, that we know the Lord. We are so blessed. One of these guys in this um, documentary is a famous actor. He doesn't even know the Lord. He has all the fame and all the money, but he doesn't know the Lord. And the question is, do you want to go to heaven? Revelation 22 verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter into through the gates into the city. There you have it. Do you want to go here? Go to heaven. Yes, you want. I know you want to. I know this is what we live for. Yet it says, blessed are they that do his commandments. Um, you will have the tree of life. All right, now let's look at the foolish boulder. All right. I can see where we are going with this preacher, but listen anyways. What makes him foolish? He, like the wise boulder, he hears, but he doesn't do. There's the catch. We, we can all hear, but what do you do with what you hear? Luke says, dig, um, dig deep, dig, dig deep. Um, you know, many people have, have this attitude. Ah, everything is going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's not going to be okay. You must make sure that, that your house is on that strong foundation, Jesus Christ. Don't go with, oh yeah, no, let's follow this direction and this direction and this faith and this thing. It's not okay. There's only one way. Jesus said, I am the truth, the life, and the way. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. Not everything is okay. Only Jesus Christ is okay. Psalm 5 verse 5 says, The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all works of iniquity. Proverbs 1 verse 7, we're looking at verses talking about foolish people. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but the fool despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 1 verse 22, How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity, and the scorners delight in the scorning, and fools hate knowledge? Proverbs 14, verse 9. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous therefore is favor. Proverbs 14, 16. The wise man, fearing, keeps himself from evil, but the foolish man goes on in his pride with no thought of danger. Are you continuing in your pride with no thought of danger? I, I would suggest that you just stop for a moment and think about how is your house? How is your foundation? Um, Ecclesiastic 4 verse 13. Better is a poor and wise child than an old and foolish king who will no more be remembered. Ecclesiastic 10 verse 2. The heart of the wise man goes in the right direction, but the heart of a foolish man goes into the wrong direction. So which builder are you? Are you wise or are you foolish? I believe all of us are wise builders. I believe that's why you're here today. I believe you are searching after the Lord. Maybe through this sermon that is serious today, but you need to hear this. Or maybe through the worship or just when you go home and just have that wonderful time with the Lord. I know you are seeking Him, but keep on seeking. And rather make sure that one day when we go to heaven, you make it. Make sure that you don't just, just miss it. Just with a centimeter. I think that will be terrible. I think, I think most people are really um, that opposed to doing what God wants them to do. As much as they un, are inclined to do what, what they need to do. do. So do you hear? The question is, do you hear? And do you do? Remember, when you hear, also do it. Also do it. Okay, foolish followers, Matthew 7, 21, 23. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. 
I don't like this verse, but it's in the Bible. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom. But he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Again, Jesus said, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, but he that do the will of my Father um, will enter into heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Do you prophesy in the name of Jesus? And in thy name have we cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you, you that work iniquity. How is it possible that somebody can prophesy in the name of Jesus? How is, it prophet, uh, how is it possible that people can cast out devils in the name of Jesus and do many wonderful things in the name of Jesus and still reach heaven, heaven and hear? Um, not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. I know why. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. That name of Jesus, it has a lot of power. You can use that name, but you can still be far from from God. So make sure that your house is strong. Make sure that your house, that that foundation is strong. Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and do them, I will be like him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. We read that in, in, in Matthew 7 verse 24. A real relationship with Christ means making him Lord, not just calling him Lord. You can say, yes, Jesus, you're my Lord. Don't just say it. Make him your Lord. In this week, when you feel that anger, when you feel whatever it is that you're not supposed to feel, um, take, take a choice and make a choice and do and forgive and say, okay, I forgive this person or, or I let it go. Don't only hear, but also do. Apply whatever the Lord gives you. I'm going to read the story of little Johnny, and this, and this tells us about hearing and doing. Back when blood transfusions were done from patient to patient, little Johnny's sister became very ill and needed a blood transfusion. His mother and father, along with the doctor, came to little Johnny, who was only six, and asked him if he would give a blood transfusion to his older sick sister. He thought for a few moments, asked if it would hurt, and then bowed his head and said he would. After about ten minutes into the, into the transfusion, little Johnny asked, when, when, when will it be? His doctor said, When will what be, Johnny? When will I die? With a small crackle in his voice, the doctor immediately assured him that he wasn't going to die. But Johnny, at six years old, was ready to die so that his older sister could live. Little Johnny did. Um, he acted. So little Johnny thought he's going to die as he gave his blood to his sister and he was ready. He, he didn't only hear, he did it. And I want you to be a little Johnny in this coming week and weeks. And not only hear, but do. Take that extra mile for the Lord. Lord, Lord. Will not do, um, Lord, Lord, will not do any good if it's not coupled with your actions. Luke 6, verse 46, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and, and do not the things which, which I say? Again, Luke 6, 46, And why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? It's all over the Bible. How many people today call him Lord, Lord, but? Lord, Lord, but. When I go out of this church, but drink like a fish, curse like sailors, smoke like chimneys, joke like fools, but. When you go out of this church, do the right thing. Do the right thing. Conclusion. Obedience to Jesus is the sum, is the substance, is the totality of the Christian life. I want you to follow God's ways. Be wise and bold on the rock. Because 1 Corinthians 10 verse 4 says, 
That rock is Jesus. I know you have Jesus. And I don't want you to go out in fear. But I want you to just go down at that foundation of your house and see what is in that foundation. Is it Jesus or is it Jesus and a lot of other things? And I start with myself. I see daily, daily where I see, oh my goodness, I need to forgive. But this is difficult. But I need to forgive. Or I need to do more of this and less of that. So, yeah, it's a heavy sermon today. But believe me, <clears throat> we're all going to be thankful when we get to heaven and we hear welcome. The doors are open. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day that we could look at our spiritual house. And Lord, I pray for that foundation of our house, Lord. I pray that it will be strong. Lord, I don't even always know what to do. But I see the Bible says, listen and do. But Holy Spirit, please help us to do the right thing. Please help us to build our houses strong, Father. And I pray, Lord, that one day we will hear, that we will not hear the words, um, um, I don't know you. But Father, I pray that every brother and sister in this church and myself, Lord, that we will have the privilege to be with you for eternity. And I pray, Father, help us and start with me today, Lord. Start with me today, Lord, that the foundation will be pure as gold. Lord, that it will not be full of unforgiveness and full of wrong things, Lord, that creep into our lives. And Lord, I pray for Sarang, Father, thank you for our wonderful friend behind the piano and for everything she's doing for this church. And Lord, my prayer for her and her family and mom also, Lord, is Psalm 23. Lord, I pray that you will be their shepherd. Lord, I pray that you will pick, pick up your sheep, Lord, and carry them, Father. And I pray, Lord, for green pastures, Lord. I pray for a table set in front of their enemies. Lord, and on and on, Psalm 23 goes. And I pray for her, Father, that she will feel your love, Lord, that she will feel um, your arms around her in this coming weeks, Father, and that she will just see that table, Father, that, that you sit in, um, in front of our enemies, Lord, where you um, just, just love us so much. I pray that it will be the most blessed birthday ever. In Jesus' name, amen.